forward let's look at some of these other tools we've got the track selection tool here which is just a very quick way of moving things in the track so if you take the track selection tool notice its keyboard shortcut is A you can click in the track and everything to the right of where the arrow is will be selected and moved no matter how long the track is so you can move it around shift it whatever you want to do if however I want to leave this first clip if I click here everything to the left is unaffected but to the right is affected so it's a very quick way of moving things around moving whole tracks if you've got hundreds of clips that you want to move all of them and you're not too happy about marquee selection which I'll show you in a moment you want to have everything on a track you can literally select it here and you can hold the shift key and you'll notice that you can get multiple tracks so holding the shift key I get two arrows and basically all of my tracks will now move together as one lump which is an incredibly useful way of doing things particularly if you've got a very long timeline and you're not happy with marquee selection what do I mean by marquee selection I simply mean choosing the selection tool which is the keyboard shortcut V and drawing around items selecting them all and then dragging them around now that's okay when you've got a small amount like this but when you've got a very long timeline with multiple tracks and you suddenly want to move all of them around for whatever reason that might be you can choose the track select tool select one layer or hold the shift key select all of them by clicking and then all of them will move together regardless of how many layers there are and regardless of how long your timeline is so a very useful tool for shifting things around the next tool to show you is this one here the razor tool which is where we can cut clips up so you can see I've got a little cut here and if I click here again I've cut the clip up now very rarely do I use the razor tool if I want to change a clip I tend to use either a ripple edit or simply a trim to trim things backwards and forwards to the appropriate place but if you actually need to physically cut something out of a clip then you can use the razor clip before and after actually select the bit that you want to move or get rid of and then if you right click on it you'll see that you've actually got an option here that even says ripple delete and that will get rid of any space if you just clear it or cut it you're going to find that you end up with a gap control Z but if we actually do this ripple delete it gets rid of the actual space as well and then we don't have a problem so I tend not to use the razor tool very much there are times occasionally when you need to use it but they aren't very often now before I get to these three other tools I just want to show you the three at the bottom the pen tool is actually used for creating keyframes now I'm over a yellow line here we haven't done animation and I'll get to animation a bit later on but if I click on one of these yellow lines I create something called a keyframe and then we can move those keyframes around so the pen tool really is for editing when we want to change values over time and control Z and we'll use the pen tool for that the panning tool or the hand tool which is keyboard shortcut H for hand doesn't work up here in the program monitor but it does work down here for quickly panning your scenes or your long timelines backwards and forwards of course you can do that with the scroll wheel backwards and forwards and you can move backwards and forwards by using the pan bar down here the new zoom bar function so quite how much you'll use the hand tool I don't know but if you want to have a very quick move around of your whole scene and whack it backwards and forwards because you've got a very long timeline then maybe you'll want to use the hand tool the zoom tool works as another way of zooming in and out now obviously we've got the new zoom bar at the bottom for zooming in and out and we can move that around to find different bits and pieces but the zoom tool itself allows us to do some very fine zooming so say I just want to see this area I can click and drag around the bit that I want to look at and it zooms into it and again if I just want to look at that bit we can zoom right into individual edits to go backwards if you hold the alt key on the PC the option key on the Mac you'll see that the plus in the middle of the tool goes to a minus if you click 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 keep clicking and effectively this is just going to zoom out all the way so it's another way of zooming in and out as well as the plus and minus keys which are the two keys next to the zero on a normal keyboard which allows us to zoom in and out so it's just another way of being able to choose different tools to be able to move in and out or pan around your scenes quickly and easily in Premiere Pro now in the next tutorial we're going to look at this tool here which is one of my favorite ones the rate stretch tool and then we're going to move on to looking and understanding what the difference between a slip and a slide edit is